I'm up to chapter 12, you know, just one chapter further than they got. So uh, I'm, I'm so excited to be here tonight. Although I had kind of a weird day. I went out to the mall this afternoon and I feel bad. I made a woman cry out at the mall. Who well, came up to me with a clipboard. She said, do you mind if I ask you a couple questions? I said, no, that's fine. She said, on average, how much money do you make every year? Thought about it with the best straight face I could manage. I said, uh, $250,000. She said, what do you do for a living? I said, I take surveys over at the other mall. <laughs> and uh, she didn't think it was funny, but I agree with you guys. It kind of was funny. I have a nephew just applied for a job out at the mall. He said the job applications have gotten very complicated. This one had a lot of fill in the blank questions, a lot of true false questions. One question read, when I'm at work, my mind is generally blank. He put true. <laughs> Probably the easiest one, but uh, yeah, you know, when you go out to a lot of malls these days, it's kind of depressing because so many stores have gone out of business. I mean, even stores that I thought were really popular. You know, right now I'm reading a book called The History of Toys R Us. I'm up to chapter 12, you know, just one chapter further than they got. So uh, I'm feeling better than Jeffrey, I think. So uh, it is good to be here. I, I was at the mall because my wife and I were celebrating our wedding anniversary next, uh, next week. Uh, 34 years of marriage. Thank you. I wanted to get her something very, very nice. Thank you. And uh, you, you know what? 34 years, we're still happily married. I think it's important to keep romance in your relationship. I know, I still love it when my wife runs her fingers through my hair. I know you're looking at me like, Tim, you don't have that much hair for that. She doesn't have all her fingers. So, uh, it's a match made in heaven, really. And... Uh, I hate to brag, in all the years we've been married, I have never heard a complaint in bed. Of course, it's kind of hard to hear up in the top bunk. But uh, 34 years of marriage, no kids, you know, in compliance with the court order. Uh, but uh, I have a lot of great nieces and nephews. My sister just gave birth to her fifth kid. And now the dad has taken videos of all five births, you know, which I think is unnecessary. I do. I, I asked him, I said, why do you do it? He said, well, when these kids get to that age where they ask the question, where do babies come from? I'll just pop in the videos and they'll never ask me another question again. <laughs> Not bad thinking. So my sister's got five kids, all under the age of eight. And so she's got her hands full, and she came up with a trick to kind of keep things in control in her house. So if you have small kids at home, uh, you might want to try this. She went to Walmart. For $7, she picked up a picture frame. The frame already had a picture of a little boy in it. And she took it home, she put it up in her living room. She didn't say anything to the kids. Her four-year-old walks in and says, Mommy, who's that boy? She said, well, that's your brother but we don't see him anymore because he didn't do what mommy said. <laughs> so you're thinking, hey, there's a Walmart on the way home. Uh, just a little bit of a tip. I, uh, I, I brought my guitar. I thought we'd try a little bit of music. Uh, this is song. Uh, First of all, I should tell you right up front, I do a lot of singing in my show. I sing all the time. I sing in the shower a lot. By applause, how many sing in the shower? All right, let, let me back up. Okay, how many of you shower? <laughs> Still not enough of you, really. I, uh, no, I love to sing in the shower. I don't turn the water on. You know, it's bad for the guitar. <laughs> but uh, I... Uh, I've been working on a children's CD. I know you're thinking, wow, that's not a good idea. But um, <laughs> it, you know what? If you got small kids at home, you're, they're going to enjoy the CD. I thought I'd do a little song from the new CD. What do you say? <laughs> yeah, two. Sounds like fun. Here we go. They just wanted me, they wanted me to make sure it works. I think it does. All right, here, here we go. A new song from the children's CD. Here we go. 
I hate going back to school. I hate going back to school. I don't like books, the lunches stink, but nobody cares what I think. I hate going back to school. Last year, our principal, Mrs. Rome, caught me eating boogers, sent me home, even though not all of them were my own. She wouldn't take that into consideration. I hate going back to school. I hate going back to school. Each year, I give myself the speech. This is the last year that I'll teach. I hate going back to school. And the kids learn, you know, teachers eat boogers too. So, uh, <laughs> and the reason I know that, I used to be a teacher. Thank you very much. Yeah, I know that's another frightening thought. But uh, as I was a religion teacher at an all girls Catholic high school for three years before going into this, I recognize you from the parking lot, actually. Um, <laughs> you've grown up. Anyway. Uh, Anyway, I, you know, I, I learned a lot when I was teaching. One day I told my kids it was all right to come to my class hungover. The principal got furious as I explained to her, aren't we supposed to be preparing these kids for college? <laughs> she really couldn't argue with that. But uh, the hard thing about teaching religion, difficult questions kids come up with. One question I always used to get is, what's the difference between purgatory and hell? The way is to try to explain it as well. Hell, of course, is very, very hot. In purgatory, it's not so much the heat, it's the humidity <laughs> that gets to you. <laughs> now, I, I was teaching freshmen in high school, and so these girls were like 13 years old, and I always wanted to make it a point that in every class, I wanted them to learn something they could use in their real life. So we got to the story of Adam and Eve, and I told my girls, I said, okay, there's two lessons to be learned. Number one, Eve ate of the forbidden fruit. Number two, she settled for the first guy who came along. <laughs> you don't have to do that. Well, maybe you do, but anyway, um, I, I don't know why I'm picking on you, but it's, fun, really. I, uh, I, I, I do have to say I'm enjoying it. Anyway, uh, it is good. I want to thank, before going further, I want to thank the folks here at Dry Bar. Uh, first of all, Dry Bar is such a, such a great, great thing. And thank you very much for coming out and supporting it. Uh, but they put me up at a nice hotel this weekend, which is not always the case in this business. Two months ago, I stayed at the worst motel ever. In fact, in my room, instead of Gideon's Bible, they had Dante's Inferno. <laughs> Open up to the page where you describe the sixth circle of hell in the margin. There's a dot with the words, you are here. <laughs> I called the front desk. I said, I need a wake up call. The guy said, you're 58 years old. You drive a Dodge Neon. Your wife had a male visitor this afternoon and you're staying here. How's that for a wake up call? <laughs> About 6.30, but uh... <laughs> Anyway, in my travels, I, I see a lot of animals. And, and when, I, when I was growing up, I thought I knew a lot about animals. And when I talk to my nieces and nephews, they don't seem to know as much. All right, now, th this gentleman right up front here, my gosh, uh, I don't know who you are. Nice to have you. You've got some sort of an animal on your hat, it looks like. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I should have told you that I was gonna talk to <laughs> this guy. Um, <laughs> my gosh, and, and not this guy, okay. So, just, just so you know, okay, I was picking on this gentleman over here but now I'm tired of him. So um, I'm, I'm gonna talk to you for just a second. All right, and, and it looks like, uh, what, what is that on your hat? You have some sort of an animal there. A puma. A puma. Ooh, yeah. All right, I know you're thinking, wow, I thought that was a shoe. Uh, <laughs> It's a hat, too, so how about that? Well, okay, a, a puma, all right. And, um, hmm, well, you know what? We may have more questions for you later on. Um, although I'm thinking, hmm, no. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I'm a little disturbed by my nieces and nephews because they don't know enough about animals. And I wrote a series of songs about animals to teach them. And, and I thought I'd do just one book tonight 
And uh, what the heck, I thought I'd share it for you guys. What do you say? Yeah, sounds like fun. Here we go. Is he dead or is he not? That's the game the possum's got. If he's just lying there with his eyes closed, you might poke him with a stick and away he'll go. If he's on the road with a squished in head, chances are that one's dead. If one looks dead but there's no aroma, that's a possum in a coma. That's right. I'll be working on a Puma song. How'd you say Puma, Puma? Uh, Puma, all right, all right. And that's, whew, I'm not going to go there because it's dirty. Okay, anyway. Uh, <laughs> I guess, good, <laughs> good to see you. Uh, no, I, no, I've been traveling around. Been doing a lot of college shows lately. Um, <clears throat> I did a show not too long ago, University of Utah, uh, home of the... You said, I didn't realize that's a Native American tribe. I thought they just shortened the name of the state, slapped an S on it, called them the Utes. I was thinking, what if other states did that? You know, have the University of Pennsylvania pencils, like, or number two. <laughs> I don't know if we have any gamblers out in the crowd, anybody? Uh, <laughs> There, there, oh, wow, good for you, all right, my gosh. Ooh, you might be able to get rid of your hat. Uh, uh, oh, good, good to have you here. Do you get to Las Vegas at all? She doesn't like me to go. She doesn't like you to go, all right, so you just go when she's asleep. Uh, so that's another happy marriage up front. Okay, anyway, um, you know what, I think Las Vegas gets people nuts. I think the gambling gets people crazy. I was in the washroom at one of the casinos. There's a guy in there dropping quarter after quarter into the urinal, hitting the lever and yelling, another flush, another flush. <laughs> I was gonna say some of the guy, then my hand dryer paid off. So, uh, got while the getting was good. <laughs> Had a weird experience in Las Vegas. I was playing a slot machine at one of the casinos. The woman at the slot machine next to me hit this huge jackpot. And then for some unknown reason, she gave all the money to me and stabbed herself. At least that's what I told the police. <laughs> so, I'm just happy to be elsewhere. But anyway, uh, saw some celebrities in Las Vegas. That was cool. And, and I have a thing about celebrities. I, I just, I'm fascinated by them. And I, I do a segment in my show uh, called Tim Cavanaugh's Cavalcade of Celebrity Birthdays. Sounds exciting already, doesn't it? <laughs> Thanks for playing along. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, I, I brought just a handful of birthdays with me. I thought I'd share some with you tonight. What do you say? Yeah, Tim. Sounds like fun. All right, this will be fun. All right. Uh, for instance, Minnie Driver uh, is celebrating a birthday. I was thinking if actress Minnie Driver married actor Bradley Cooper, she'd be a Minnie Cooper driver. <laughs> I told you it'd be fun, as I told you. NBC meteorologist Al Roker is 65 at the airport, 65 downtown, and 65 in the outlying areas. <laughs> Rapper Snoop Dogg is 47, which is roughly seven in dog years. <laughs> I scared your puma a little bit there. Because that's, <laughs> that's a cat. They don't like dogs. So. <laughs> Matt Groening is celebrating a birthday. And now who can tell me who Matt Groening is? He created The Simpsons, and that's been such a good show for such a long time. And they recently took a poll asking, who's your favorite Simpson? Finishing first, Homer. Finishing last, O.J. <laughs> yep. He's <laughs> out of jail, back in the act. That's, uh, that's how I roll. Um, now, this is interesting. Tori Spelling and Kelsey Grammer share a birthday in the same week. 
Now, now they're, they're combining to, to start a new TV show. It's going to be called Tori and Kelsey, you know, because who's going to watch a show called Spelling and Grammar? <laughs> I like these. Okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> and uh, Beyonce is celebrating a birthday. And uh, I've always loved her name, Beyonce. It's, it's so exotic. And I wondered, you know, what's the derivation? Where did that name come from? I looked it up. It turns out it's a, it's a, sp a Spanish bingo word meaning B11. <laughs> Nobody ever laughs at that, but I don't care. I, I, I just like saying it out loud. Oh, boy. And finally, uh, the, the great actress Penny Marshall uh, would have turned 76 this week. Uh, when she died, she was cremated, uh, which made her the, prover the proverbial penny earned. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, some very sick people in the back, and I, I kind of like that about you guys. Anyway, it, it is fun. Uh, I get to go home next week, which is going to be really, really cool. And, and now when I get home, I'm going to have a mountain of, of, uh, of, of junk mail. Uh, I still get so much junk mail. Every year, I get a calendar from a local funeral home. It bothers me for two reasons. Number one, I don't like the idea that a mortician has my name on any kind of a list. <laughs> Secondly, I'm afraid that one year I'm going to get a calendar that only goes up to like March. <laughs> I think he's going to be telling me something. So I'm looking forward to seeing my sister. She's got a weird job. She works for the Depends Undergarment Company. She answers their 1-800 incontinence hotline. I called up one day just to check it out. She answered, incontinence hotline, can you hold? And uh, if I could hold, I wouldn't be calling for goodness sake. But uh, I'm hoping to see my nephew. I have one nephew, five years old, always getting into trouble. Last time I saw him, he was playing doctor with the little girl next door. Yeah, luckily he hasn't started the exam yet. He was still taking her insurance information when I caught him, so that was a, a close call. Now, his sister, six years old, I was babysitting for her, and she said, Uncle Tim, could you tell me a bedtime story? So I told her the story of the tortoise and the hare, which is just chock full of life lessons, I think. And when I was all done, I said, well, what do you think the moral of that story is? She thought about it, and she said, Hair loss can be devastating. <laughs> She's a smart kid. Uh, I, I asked her, I said, I said, what do you want to be when you grow up? She says, I want to be a surrealistic artist. So I bought her a paint by a rational number set. <laughs> I asked her, I said, uh, so why don't you make a list of your favorite painters? And, and she did. And at the top of the list was Picasso. Uh, but she spelled it wrong. She spelled it P-C-I-A-S-S-O. And I said, Kayla, you, you misspelled it. Uh, it's P-I-C, not P-C-I. And she said, I did that on purpose as a tribute to him. Because if you look at any of his portraits, you'll see he never puts the I in the right place. <laughs> I'm separating some of you off from this. Uh, it's an artist, Picasso. It's if you go to a museum sometime. Okay, anyway, uh, I need a volunteer to help me out with this next particular piece. And, and uh, we have a gentleman sitting right up front, the, the, the Puma guy. All right, why, why don't you come on up and help me out with this? Uh, I need your help to to kind of wrap up the show a little bit. This is going to be fun. All right. Uh, I hope it's going to be fun. We're going to find out. Um, I'm a little scared of him. Um, by, by the way, if you're watching closely, I just tried to drink the microphone. Because <laughs> I'm a spaz. Okay. Good to have you here, sir. Welcome. Um, nice to see you. Uh, God, come on over right here. And, and hi, your name? Dean. Dean. Dane. Say to Dane, everybody. Hi, Dane. 
Dane, good to have you here. You're with this woman up front here. Uh, uh, very good. Is that is that your wife? Yes. Uh, okay. And uh, is he uh, is he a, a good guy? Uh, would you say he's a a great Dane? <laughs> That almost looks like a great Dane up there. Yeah, you could you could tell people, oh, it's a Dane. Uh, it's a hat for me. So, um, so Dane, great to have you here. Welcome, my gosh. And uh, let me ask you, uh, what what do you do for a living? I'm a teacher. A teacher. Ooh, very, very, very good. All right, uh, what, what do you teach? Psychology. Psych psychology. Ooh, yeah, I know. <laughs> You're looking at me like, you could be a mini-series. Um, <laughs> I've got problems. Um, so, so, okay, so, Dane, okay, now, now you I'll say that again, psychology. Psychology. Oh, I love the way, okay. So, you're not from uh, here in the United States, it doesn't sound like. Where, where are you from? Australia. Uh, whoa! <laughs> Very, very good. All right. I know you're thinking, there goes the prize for furthest away. Uh, Australia almost always wins. Well, um, uh, what are you doing here in the States? Do you live here now? No, just visiting. Uh, oh, you're just visiting. All right. Do you have a visa? Uh, can I see your papers? Um, no, I don't. No. Oh, okay. I think we got a, a problem. Anyway, um, Dane... Hang in there. If all goes well, a nice gift for you. Hang in there. Uh, here's my situation. I wrote a new song, and I haven't gotten around to memorizing it yet. And, uh, Dane, I need your help. I need you just to, to hold my lyrics for me. Uh, and you know what? I want to give you a prize, okay? Um, that, uh, And I'm going to give it to you now because, you know, when the song's over, you know, that's kind of the end of the show. And it's, uh, woo. So um, the, the prize would be kind of anticlimactic for you. Um, so so uh, let, me, let me ask you this, okay? Um, uh, do you have a cat at home? Yes. All, all right. I, I don't really have anything appropriate for that. But um, <laughs> I, I, how long have you been married? Uh, 20 years. Uh, 20. Oh, the, the way you say everything very precisely. 20, 20 years. Ooh. All right. That's, a, that's, that's very good. You could learn something. Anyway, um, how about, how about, oh, this is kind of a nice game. How about for Dane? How about a package of pitted prunes for Dane, huh? <laughs> Don't thank me now. You'll thank me in about two hours. So, uh, or 120 minutes. All right. Uh, here, we'll, we'll throw that down there. Okay. All right. Okay. Now. Now it's all business. Okay, I'm going to ask you to stand right over here if it's not to be a problem. And let me just get this out of the way because this is really a mess. All right, um, here's my situation. I wrote a new song. I haven't gotten around to memorizing it yet. Uh, with your help, I'm going to be able to get through this. I'm going to ask you just to hold my lyrics for me. Perfect. Have you done this sort of thing before? Maybe an altar boy when you were a kid? Oh, Tim, I got to wear a dress. All right. <laughs> This is going to be uncomfortable. But this <laughs> I've never had to do that. Okay. Uh, that, was, that was interesting. Okay. Anyway, um, yeah, you people from Australia, you, you smell a little different. But anyway, um, but you know that. Anyway, um, anyway here's, a, here's the new song. Uh, and uh, you already won a nice gift, so um, so that's my thank you to you. Okay, so when it's over, scram. Okay, all right. All right. Uh, and, and in terms of probably your question about the prunes, yes, you will have to pay a duty. Uh, for that. I hadn't really thought that one out, but that's okay. That's, that's a good. All right, you're doing a great job. Dane, all you have to do is just hold it, what the heck. Uh, and this is a, 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 a new song. I thought we'd try it. What do you say? Yeah, Tim. Sounds like fun. Here we go. There's a man of courage and power. You can count on him in your darkest hour. He's got a strong back and a steady hand. His legend is growing across the land. He's Dane, the human music stand. He can hold more music. 
sick than ten men can. He's a superhero, no ordinary man. Hope someday to be a podium before teaching psychology. He takes a modium. He's Dane, the human music stand. He's Dane, the human music stand. If I move to a different spot in the room, he'll follow me there, cause he can carry a tune. <laughs> Wears pampers so he can go with the flow. Crowds chant his name wherever he goes. He's Dane, 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 Dane. The human music, the human music, the human music, 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 <laughs> stand.